This post-draft best ball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk-free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at winbet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by Roman. Roman is the straightforward way to take care of your ED. Just head to GetRoman.com slash SGP for $15 off your first month. That's GetRoman.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is home to the Best Ball Mania 2 contest where you can win $1 million. That's right, $1 million. Sign up now at underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money. Kramer, what's happening, Kramer Dog? What's up, Sean? Just you know, little DJ and I, and we're in the caves. We're in our respective caves. Yes, I'm but. back, uh, back east on the East Coast, hanging out, uh, visiting the family for Mother's Day, amongst other things, and yeah, still committed to best ball and uh, doing these uh, these best ball drafts. They're super fun. Again, yeah, you know, we're just here to talk. National Football League. We'll be getting into some NBA playoffs. They're coming up, but again, perfect. Is there ever a bad time to talk about the NFL? If there is, I don't want to know about it. We we've got some players that have been drafted. We know their teams. We're going to take a crack again at, at this best ball. I'm actually in a state that does not uh, have a deal with the old uh, underdog fantasy, so I will not be drafting, but I will be helping coach up uh, Team Kramer, aka Team SGPN. So we got to, uh, you know, we got to have a good team, Kramer. And of course, underdogfantasy.com, use that promo code SGPN so they know we sent you. Get in on the Best Ball Mania 2. That's what we're working on here. They also have an NBA playoffs uh, Best Ball Draft, which is super fun. And this, uh, the Best Ball Mania 2, you have a shot to win a million dollars off a $25 entry. Hell of a, hell of an opportunity there. So, uh, Make sure you get involved on that. And uh, I I was talking to Kramer in the office the other day. We've done a handful of these so far. To me, my biggest mistakes, and Ryan, I'm always self-scouting, always looking at my drafts, seeing what can I do better. And to me, the biggest mistake I've made is not having enough shares of running quarterbacks. Looking to correct that today. How are you doing, Kramer? Any strategies uh, coming in here? I mean, uh, don't we just have to do the hyper fragile? Call it a day. <laughs> I, isn't that isn't that where we're going? I, I I think I think we have to. I I think we have to look at ourselves in the mirror, and we have to just be risky, right? Isn't that isn't that the motto around here? We got to push the chips in. All and, risk uh, it. Yeah, no yeah. risk it, no biscuit. Of course, hyper fragile. Uh, for those of you who are not aware basically means you kind of go top heavy with your running backs in the best ball draft, maybe getting two or three uh, early on and then kind of punting on the position. You still want to end up with like four, maybe five running backs, but don't be afraid to kind of load up with a a couple of big guns early and, and, and fragile meaning like, Hey, if, if, you know, two or three of your running backs get injured, you're totally screwed. Uh, well, totally again, fucked. I don't know yeah. why I, I didn't. I censored myself there. This is a DGEN's only podcast. Well, and, and again, you're you're playing you're playing for the million. You're not playing for a place. You're not playing for a participation trophy. So you might as well do something that's going to make it a little bit different. That that's my thesis, Sean. Yeah. It, the issue is you don't want to go too crazy with what you're doing because. So the, the way this best ball tournament works and a lot of these best ball tournaments work is you you're in a league, quote unquote, with 12 other people. And then you got to win that league and then you kind of get entered into another league and then another one. So you have to make it out of like the first and I forget where it cuts off what week we'll be doing some post schedule. And, and maybe there are some alterations or drafting strategy we'll bring in after the schedule comes out. But I you still have to be conservative or sane enough to get out to come up with a lineup that gets you out of the primary league right yeah and I think the other thing you got to remember this year is that we're we're dealing with a season where there's going to be 18 weeks so week 17 is the championship week Sean yes oh and uh and shout out to Shane Kenyon pointing out week 14 is the first cutoff so you got to get yourself out of that uh you know out of that first run and, and and so you don't want to 
go too wild. You know, like obviously when we do like the DraftKings, Millie Makers, you're just playing for that week. So you, you kind of got to meet in the middle where your strategy is aggressive enough uh, that you have a shot at the million dollars, but sane enough that you're, you still plan on getting out of the uh, first 14 weeks there. Well, it's, it's one of those gimmicks where you, you, everyone knows that guy that wants to draft the sleepers that are going to pop like three years from now. And yeah. you, you just, you can't do too much of that. So, you know, if you're, if you're going to be different, you're going to take contrarian angles it obviously makes sense to do that. I think a little bit more towards the end of the draft uh, versus kind of gambling with more of the draft capital. We got one person left, Sean. One, one person. person left. And again, perfect uh, reason to follow us on Twitter at gambling podcast or subscribe, turn those notifications on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. So you never miss when we hop on live and a uh, shout out to Shane. He's saying this app is fire. Did like five drafts this weekend. That I, I, I'm totally uh, with you there. It's so funny. You just, again, I love drafting and it's so fun to be able to do these this far out. Yeah. It's 20 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever, whatever it is. They have smaller ones that aren't the millionaire maker. If you're just itching for a draft. And again, why would you ever do a mock draft again? So much wasted time. Just do a $2 best ball draft. You get the same rush of drafting. You get the same insight on who people like, who they're high on, who they're low on, whatever. And yeah, there's a chance you win a small prize. What a, I mean, you can go to the 25, you can do the $2. They even have, and we're going to be doing some of these later as well. They have a, a freshman and sophomore only uh, draft. They have a three man, which uh, isn't as good for the podcast, but maybe Kramer's been hopping on Fridays and just doing uh, some solo uh, best ball drafts, but maybe we'll do some of the three man drafts, which is like a whole other thing. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around, uh, but I, Oh, I'm committed to 150 teams in the best ball mania too. I'm, <laughs> I'm committed. I just have to ration myself. It's 25 teams a month between now and football season. Sean. <laughs> Hashtag DGENs only. Speaking of DGENs only, make sure you head over to winbet.com, W Y N N bet.com. Grab, grab that win betting app, download it, and you get up to a $500 risk free bet. Of course, terms and conditions apply. Winbet.com. Check them out. Presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. I mean, you can't make it out to Las Vegas. Las Vegas making it out to you, bringing the excitement, the rush. You know that rush of uh, Las Vegas. You're sitting in the sports book, getting that tickle in your brain where you got a lot of action going on. And, you know, maybe right now, for whatever reason, you can't make it out to the win Las Vegas in Las Vegas. You can do the next best thing, and that is to grab the win betting app, W-Y-N-N-Bet.com, L-F-G. Someone asking Sean. for some uh, NBA picks. Can't wait until NFL. We will be doing, uh, James, in the YouTube, we will be doing a NBA playoff best ball, so stay tuned for that. And if you want NBA picks, we have an NBA Gambling Podcast, and over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com, click the NBA tab, drop down to NBA picks. Okay, Kramer, the draft is set. What, where are we drafting at? We are in the sixth spot. One six. Who are we looking one, to grab? One six, right in the middle. Uh, I'm working on getting the board up. I, you know, I think I think this is one of those situations where we're right in the middle of we can pick whoever we want. Most likely, we won't have all the choices, obviously. But I, I think we're going to be looking at a healthy opportunity. Do we take Travis Kelsey? Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I, I can't do Saquon Kramer. But other than that, I'm fine. Christian McCaffrey goes one one. I was in a slow best ball draft and I tried to like get myself cute and not take Christian McCaffrey. I just couldn't figure out a way to do it. Dalvin cook, Alvin Kamara at one three, Ryan, that seems high to me. Saquon Barkley is gone again. We we're on oh. these uh, 30 second drafts. Lost our screen for a second. I apologize. Yes. He oh, lost sorry. our screen Kramer. These 30 second drafts are they're insane because these people, these people that don't mess around that are in these drafts. Derek Henry has been selected. Kramer, what are our options here at one six uh, with 10 seconds only? I think we take Kelsey or Jonathan Taylor. Let's take Kelsey. Right? Kelsey. Yeah. I know we had just discussed the hyper fragile uh, running back, but I don't you even still, know if you can, you can still do it. We can still do it. And, and yeah, uh, I think, you know, as you would imagine, taking someone like Kelsey, 
allows you to also wait a very long time for tight end. And if you do it right, maybe only two tight ends. And apologies if my uh, the ice in my whiskey glass makes it through <laughs> on the uh, podcast audio. But I'm at home. I'm using my dad's uh, mic that he works, uses his headset mic he uses for work, and I'm drinking a bunch of whiskey. All right, John. You so know. Jonathan Taylor goes right after we take Kelsey, and then uh, de- uh, oh, on the clock, Devonte Adams. Okay, he's the next uh, pick. That's a little bit surprising. Uh, where, where are you at with Devonte Adams, Kramer? It's certainly getting to the point where you have to be a little nervous. I think if I'm if I'm if I'm a Packers fan, I still like the I, I still like him. I, I think you still like him regardless because of the volume potential there. But you can't be. T- I, I don't think he's a first rounder anymore. I think you have to wait until the second round right now. Like this is just happens to be May 9th. And, yeah. you know, not everyone's doing best ball right now. But if you are, I think you have to take Hill ahead of him. I think I would definitely take Aaron Jones ahead of him because of the situation. You want to rattle off who's been taken here, Sean? Yep. Tyreek Hill, uh, Zeke Elliott, and I would play the uh, disgusting sound drop if I had that available to me. Aaron Jones gone. Steph Diggs. A.J. Brown. And A.J. Brown seems like a guy that's climbing up uh, people's draft boards. Of course, underdog fantasy is half point PPR only. Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler. Eckler's kind of an interesting play. Um, I, I I think he should have a pretty big year. I don't know. Although it seems like with, with Herbert, maybe they're not as, I don't know, maybe they're not as crazy about throwing to the running backs. I, I will end up with plenty of Eckler if I'm picking around the turn, I think. Um, you know, there's an opportunity. Again, you like running backs who are going to play in an offense that's going to score a lot of points. We saw nothing to make us believe they won't be that this year with, with Herbert. Yeah, Cam Akers, who I, I, I want nothing to do with Cam Akers on the Rams. Uh, George Kittle goes after Cam Akers. And it's not so much I'm anti the Rams offense. I just don't think any one person is going to be that strong in the offense. There, there are just so many mouths to feed. Uh, and we're George on Kittle the clock. goes, Joe Mixon goes, what are we doing here, Kramer? Do we, do we go running back? Are there any RB1s I- worth grabbing? No, I think we take DeAndre Hopkins because he's still yep. here, still an elite pass catcher. And again, I think, you know, we can still grab a running back the next time around. I, I think had we talked about this ahead of time, I would have said uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Justin Jefferson after that, and then Calvin Ridley to me with DK Metcalf. Are, are, I would love to be able to get one of those guys if we are going to take a lot and we are going to maybe take a break from wide receiver after this for a couple rounds. Uh, I would love to end up with one. So uh, getting Hopkins, obviously lots of volume. I don't care that there's more mouths to feed. We've seen it before. Calvin Ridley, like you said, goes right after uh, we take DeAndre Hopkins. Najee Harris. Mm, That is interesting. Yeah, Obviously you like the situation, but man, that still feels a bit high for the, for a rookie running back, even in that Steelers offense, Justin Jefferson now goes, because what's Najee Harris's pass catching role? I realize this is half point PPR, but doesn't that seem a little high, Kramer? Uh, I he's he's shooting up the boards, and I think again it's a it's a product of people projecting the Steelers' offense to be productive. If you have a running back in a productive offense, logic would s- suggest that he's going to do well. Uh, Justin Jefferson, and then DK Metcalf, Sean, who yep. d- you know showed up, finished in last place in the hundred meter uh, in the qualifying attempt, but showed up pretty impressive. He, he if you haven't seen the video, Sean, I, I did uh, tweet it out at Gambling Podcast. Uh, maybe it was at Kramer centric, but either way, the guy was so much larger. The, really impressive. <laughs> he, it was like noticeable that he was not. Yeah. Uh, he didn't belong. No, but I mean, that's pretty awesome. He ran it. It's hilarious on Twitter. Everyone goes, I don't know why people are making fun of DK Metcalf. Like, no one. It, it's like these classic Twitter straw man. No one was making fun of DK Metcalf. Everyone thought it was cool. He uh, almost kind of got in the mix. And yeah, it's, it really just puts it in perspective, how awesome these sprinters are. Darren Waller goes after DK Metcalf. Then Keenan Allen, who was a guy I kind of had an eye on uh, for us there, Ryan, in the third round. Going to be interesting. Clyde Edwards Lair goes. Do we have to go running back here in the third round? And and I'm going to sit here and I will uh, stand on the table, pound the table. 
I think there's an opportunity between DeAndre Swift, who you I'm sure you like less, and a guy like J.K. Dobbins. Uh, to me, basically the debate is between do we want one more of these really nice receivers who have opportunity, yep. or or do we want to take the guy who looks like he's going to be the lead back in an offense that loves to run, run the ball, and that's J.K. Dobbins. I know we have one more guy to avoid getting sniped, but I, I would – uh, that would be my angle. I think Miles Sanders. There, there appears to be some question about his his complete role. Oh, you know what? Uh, so Antonio Gibson goes. Michael Thomas goes. Terry McLaurin. Kramer, let's let's grab Miles Sanders. Thank you for bringing that what? up. Are you sure over J.K. Dobbins? Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh my God. All right. Let's see, this is where the draft goes to shit. <laughs> this is where I I try and give Kramer a dap, and he leaves me hanging. J.K. Dobbins was higher on our board. Damn it. We're supposed to, to go best player available. Miles Sanders is going to light shit up in this offense. And, yeah, maybe his PPR points aren't as high as they would be in a full in a full point PPR and, and maybe doesn't catch as much. But, I mean, you know, Kenny Gainwell is a fifth-round pick. Uh, DeAndre Swift isn't taking a ton of snaps away from Miles Sanders. No. I think they're – I think the offense is they're going to open it up. So I like him t- taking him in the third round is a, is a good player. Key to negotiations is to uh, help your opponent make them feel like they, they got something here. So you got your Miles <laughs> Sanders. Now I don't have to hear about any Eagles bullshit for a while. Um, DeAndre Swift goes right after us. Josh Jacobs, Patrick Mahomes, Amari Cooper, J.K. Dobbins. Kramer, do we do we is this a Josh Allen draft? You know, it I know you be. don't want to go early quarterback, but I, I, I keep looking at my drafts and I'm, I keep being pissed that I didn't take a running quarterback. I, we, we, we don't have Mahomes to stack with Kelsey now, but I do think having Hopkins makes me intrigued in Kyler. Josh Allen gone. Ooh, we won't right. have that opportunity. So Robinson's gone. Josh Allen's gone. I'll say it. And and obviously there are some listeners in the podcast, <laughs> a podcast listeners in this draft, but I, I think if. If Kyler is here at four, I think we consider it. No, I think we can wait. I, I don't really? think we need. I don't think we need to. I'm worried we, we just don't get. Uh, uh, and maybe we end up with Jalen Hurts. All right. So after Josh Allen goes, Mike Evans is off the board. C.D. Lamb, Chris Carson. See, to me, the fact that we could still get David Montgomery and Kyler. Wow, you maybe I was wrong. You were right. Kyler yeah. gone. Uh, now looking at the the conversation to me, it's between like one of these receivers. who I'm sure we all like, or like to me, if David Montgomery is there and it's, we are now on the clock. I don't see how playing this model. We don't take a guy who is obviously going to be their bell cow. Yeah, let's do it. All right. David Montgomery, let it rip Kramer. And I feel now, now taking Kelsey, taking Hopkins to start and still ending up with two guys who at least going into the season, appear to be the number one guy. That's that. Yeah. Now I'm feeling better. And now is where do we take, I think our next round decision is going to be again, you know, with the quarterbacks uh, going a little faster than I would have anticipated. I was able to get Kyler, I think in the sixth, a couple days ago. This is like my seventh draft, by the way, Sean. Um, <laughs> but we do still have a couple, you know, what I would say, running backs that we like we could end up taking our third running back now still get our three running backs in the first five rounds but end up with elite pass catchers and travis Kelsey. yeah and, and then and then just go heavy pass catchers afterwards okay so after we selected david montgomery robert woods jamar chase miles gaskin dj moore all like. off the board we do have to think about stacks a little bit and both pass catchers we have the stack is not available so that's something we want to keep an eye on here we're going to be drafting lots more pass catchers. And That's I true. think, and I think we, you know, we shouldn't force ourselves into a high profile stack when we both know there are some lower profile stacks we both love. And we don't even need to say it out loud, but cheaper quarterbacks with cheaper wide receivers. So I think we're going to be able to draft. Yeah. But again, to my point, I'm worried. I want to get some running quarterbacks and I'm worried I know you're anti Justin Fields, and I, I don't think we need to seriously consider him yet. But I do think just the way the Bears' offense runs, I, I think there's a world where Justin Fields ends up running the ball a ton and having a really good year fantasy wise, even though the Bears still may suck. 
Yeah, and, and honestly, dude, if you want to talk me into probably the best running quarterback left available right now in this next round, that's intriguing to me. I just think there's some guys who aren't necessarily running. Who, oh, there he goes. Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson is gone. Tyler Lockett is gone. Your buddy Kenny Galladay, all gone, Kramer. Chris Godwin is gone. So the uh, Tampa Bay pass right. catchers. Mike Davis, which I think is a – that's kind of sneaky too. And, and uh, now we're on the clock. I mean – I was about to tell you we have to take either Mike Davis or Kareem Hunt if they are here because again Ooh, look Kareem at the Hunt, running look it. at the running back cliff after this it becomes speculative and so I, I think I know Hunt has a sharing role but it's a role that he ha we've seen him be productive in before I love the three running backs we ended up with here to go with Kelsey and Hopkins yeah I'm loving our team right now. I mean, you know, you're 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 sold on Sanders, so I assume it will be a better pick than J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. All right. So now now we're kind Kyle, of in Kyle a nice. Pitts. Yeah. Go ahead, Sean. Kyle Pitts off the board. Uh, Cooper Cup off the board. Kramer. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. The Lamar Jackson goes. What are the best running quarterbacks available? It might be Jalen Hurts. So yeah, Travis Etienne goes. Dak. Prescott goes, Deontay Johnson goes, who you know Deontay Johnson was on our short list, uh, at least my short list. Chase Edmonds goes. That's kind of an interesting late pull for Chase Edmonds, who I'm not super high on. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I you could talk me into taking James Conner here and then just never drafting another running back again. Wow. Javante uh, Williams goes, Mark Andrews goes. So some of the higher tight ends off the board. I, I, you know, as much as it is intriguing to take a, a, you know, high opportunity running back and just be done with it here. There's also a, you know, we could also be talked into the quarterback and I think, you know, you, you can look at the quarterback rankings and I quickly identify who I'm talking about. And I know we don't have the, the premier stack, but there's plenty of stacks that I could see going off with that team this year. Brandon Ayuk, DJ Chark have uh, been selected. Where, where are you at with Trey Lance, Kramer? We, were, we did the Futures podcast. Do you think Trey Lance is a day one starter? No. And I, and I think, honestly, like if I look at the board right now, there's probably three guys. Uh, four T. Higgins? Wanted is gone now we're on the clock i say we take jalen hurts but what do you what do you got for me ron see i i would this is where i say uh to me justin herbert is a guy Ooh. that we can stack cheaply uh and All right. it, yes he doesn't have the legs isn't jalen hurts but we we love his upside i'm gonna pull the trigger and and we can stack it later with a with a mike williams we can stack it with a palmer a guy and with someone cheaper who yeah. might be less popular as well donald parham there you go. And and I did we maybe reach a little bit on the pick? I, I don't know. The, the, it, this draft, the quarterbacks are going. And, uh, well, and, and Herbert, too. I, I mean, again, I know I, I said how I want to take a running quarterback. Herbert certainly has, like, MVP upside season written all over him. I, I mean, I like him at MVP at, like, 20 to 1 over a win bet. I, I think he's a guy that can – you see these quarterbacks make that sophomore jump and I, I don't know, man, he will see what they, what their new, I'm kind of a little worried. The fact that they have a defensive minded head coach running that entire offensive team or, you know, entire team. Um, that's always a little worrisome from fantasy production. If you have a defensive guy as your head coach, I feel like, but um, I mean, Herbert looks so good and so many deep passes down the field. So after we take Herbert, Chase Claypool off the board, Cortland Sutton off the board, Odell Beckham, the boat trip himself, Russell Wilson, Danger Russ, he's gone. And, and to me, I think with our next pick, Sean, we could – there's definitely some angles where we can put, position ourselves to do another stack. Um, specifically, I think if we target a wide receiver here, we do start to need you know, additional pass catchers. We're a little bit behind the eight ball with taking a quarterback here. But I think we start, uh, what are we, five picks away. I don't want to say his name. I think he could be on some radars right now. But I, <laughs> I, do, I do think we need to get into the wide receiver room. Now, there are some other opportunities where I'm like, 
I'm very intrigued, for example, with a guy like TJ Hawkinson in a year where he could be the guy who gets a hundred yeah. a zillion targets. Uh it would also allow us, in my opinion, to be done with the tight end positions, but potentially. Um, but I, I think we have to go. I would, take, I would take, yeah, but I would take Goddard over uh, TJ Hawkinson. And I, I don't know. I'm just not that high on Hawk. I, I, opportunity. I'm, it's Jared Goff. He's going to see a ton of targets. They don't have any wide receivers. We've already discussed well, this. Well, it sounds like you talked Dave into uh, drafting him because Dave selects TJ Hawkinson. Will Will Fuller off the board. Trey Sermon goes I, and, for the 49ers. And it seems like we have a little bit of Devonta a Smith is off the board as well. That's very early. Uh, and, and we have a uh, I, I think we have a r- official running back slip. T- a Bo- Tyler Boyd, another guy who just went another cheaper stack with Burrow coming back from the injury. A little scary for me. But yep. Sean, a r- running back slipping here. Uh, we've already seen uh, Travis Etienne go. And and James Robinson still still sitting there. Like at, at what point does he become a buy? Logan Thomas goes right before us, Sean. To me, this is where we pluck Robbie Anderson out of thin air, right? Yeah, let's do it. Um, how, do you, Logan do you Thomas. Do you want to consider James Robinson or not? No, right? Like we we we're gonna walk away from that situation. We're gonna take yeah. Robbie Anderson. Let's say let's take Robbie Anderson. I I love that situation. I love him. Uh, getting paired up with his old buddy, Sam Darnold. How does Logan Thomas get taken in front of, in front of Dallas Goddard? I, I just don't see that. Did you see, I mean, what he did? you saw what he did last year. I mean, I know you're a Homer, Sean, but you, yeah, I, I think a Zach Ertz still on the roster, right? Uh, yeah, but well, we'll see. Maybe he ends up playing, but I, I would be pretty shocked. James Connor goes, James Robinson goes, Guys, we're talking about coming off the roster. Yeah, but I think I don't know. Fitzmagic isn't a guy who really loves throwing to the tight end. Debo Samuel goes. Curtis Samuel goes. Laviska Chenault off the board. Certainly, I cert- the, the board has the look of a situation where we probably need to continue to take pass catchers. It, it's starting to get thin out there, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, we only have two receivers right now. So, but I mean, we also have Travis Kelsey. Uh, we also have three running backs, Kareem Hunt, uh, certainly uh, uh, tons of pass catching opportunities. Raheem Mostert goes. Dallas Goddard does go. Jalen Waddle goes. Interesting. Interesting. He goes third here, even though he went second in the uh, NFL draft. Juju off the board. What are we what are we looking at receiver wise, Ryan? Feels like we almost have to go receiver here. Well, if I if I filter out to just receivers and tight ends, I, I think <laughs> But even tight ends, I mean, this isn't FFPC. We don't get the bonus one there's and nothing, a half. There's nothing here for us. So if I And we just, have Kelsey, so I don't know. I, I'm fine. I'm fine just taking a punt on tight end later. Noah Fant is gone. I'd rather focus on the best receiver available right now. I, I I mean, at some point, I think Jarvis Landry, I, I think we've discussed him plenty of times. Uh, no reason. I think, is he in a contract year? Uh, yeah, I think he is towards the end of his contract. I mean, oh, maybe yeah. the idea Odell Beckham comes back and seals some of his targets, but he he's still, to me, I think he's kind of the number one going into this season. We'll, we'll see how things shake out with um, – you know, with the boat trip himself, Jerry Judy goes, Michael Pittman goes, Kramer. Who's who's our who's our best receiver right now? Available. I, I mean, I, I honestly, I I think it's it's probably uh, Brandon Cooks. The situation. I think it's probably Jarvis Landry. Yeah, yeah. I don't love that Cleveland offense, but I I like Jarvis Landry here. I, I think it's a relatively uh, low ceiling, high floor pick. But we found, we saw the way he was getting into the end zone, and I and I think. There's no, I don't mind, especially with the way that our roster is currently constructed. I don't mind getting a piece of the Cleveland offense here to pair with Kareem Hunt. Kind of a sideways stack, Sean. I like it. Ryan, you mentioned low ceiling. You don't want to end up in a bedroom situation where your performance hits a low ceiling. If your performance is hitting a low ceiling already, let's get that, let's get that up to a, uh, you know, high floor, high ceiling situation. You know where you can do that? You can do that over at getroman.com slash SGP. 
oh, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> you can do the math. What do moms really like? They they like someone that's giving their all, that's engaged, that's hitting that high, uh, high ceiling. And you can, you can find that over at GetRoman.com slash SGP. Again, if you're dealing with ED, get it, you know, do yourself a favor. Get, and take it, get it taken care of. If it's bothering you, if it doesn't bother you, it would bother me. And again, all you got to do, GetRoman.com slash SGP. Free shipping if uh, medication is right for you. Two-day shipping. Medication, um, if appropriate, they'll send it out. Completely discreet. The best part is you can get it taken care of without leaving the comfort of your own home. I mean, just fire up the old Zoom. You got the phone going. You're, you're hanging out in your room. Whatever it is, it, it's easy, discreet. Again, get it taken care of. Do yourself a favor. Get Roman.com slash SGP. Get $15 off your first month and free two-day shipping. Doesn't get any better than that. Get Roman.com slash SGP. $15 off your first month of treatment. LF. G Kramer. Okay, right. gonna catch people up on the picks. Jalen Hurts goes right after Landry, then Joe Burrow, Marquise Brown, Michael Gallup, Damian Harris, Michael Carter. Interesting. Ronald Jones, Zach Moss. Ooh. Kramer, we're almost back on the clock. Feels like we should just keep going pass catcher here. Ooh, I Antonio do. Brown. That would that would have been sneaky for us. I, I am looking at the running backs and I am starting to wonder if we should grab our last one and, and if there's someone we could grab into a, a potentially plus plus situation. What um, do we got? Would we dare take Tony Pollard right now? Sean. Take who? Tony Pollard. You cut out. What are you suggesting, Ron? All right. I, I had to, we ran out of time. I, I was suggesting that we take our last running back into a plus situation. And I was, I was, uh, I was saying we should either take Tony Pollard or AJ Dillon. Okay. Well, uh, again, I cut out, but hopefully you, we've been doing this podcast for a long time. So, you know, my stance on taking Dallas Cowboys. So the fact that you even yeah. brought it up is a disgusting act, Ryan. Come on, dude. In I, my I, own house, drafting a known cowboy. I brought it up. I, for the here's listeners. what I say too, and I'm sure the listeners are uh, that are in this draft, which are a handful. I know just by these screen names, and they're going to snake him from us. But behind the curtain, Kramer, why don't we keep an eye on Kenny Gainwell as one of these late late round bullets? Um, for best ball because it's quietly a handcuff for Miles Sanders as well as like a guy that everyone says was the best pass catching running back in the draft class in a Sirianni off and want to mm. throw the ball to the running back. So I, I think, again, not saying next pick, but down the line, we should keep an eye on him. After we selected A.J. Dillon, Aaron Rodgers, the diva himself, Marvin Jones goes, Tyler Higby goes, Kenyon Drake I think Kenyon Drake's drafted a little late here. I, I, I don't know if that Josh Jacobs job is completely sewed up. Tom Brady goes. Devontae Parker goes. Gabe Davis goes. Mike Williams. Kramer, we slept. Damn. We missed our we missed yeah, I, our awesome sack there. I didn't think he was. Well, you know, he does worry me. I almost would rather stack uh, with one of the random guys at the end because I, I do worry about Mike Williams' health. He does seem that he, he does have some health him. issues. Gus Edwards goes. Michael Hardman goes. At what, like we're just at what point do we take uh, do we take a guy like Brandon Cooks? He produces with every quarterback in every situation, and and certainly there's a world where Deshaun Watson. I don't know. He plays eventually. Robert Tunyon goes. He was a guy I had my eye on as our uh, second tight end, Kramer. Brandon Cooks goes, so he's not even an option. Who's our best receiver available? I feel like we Corey just have Davis, to go, baby. Oh yeah, an another Definitely. potential stack. Let's do it. Yeah, like that. I mean, again, we're we're setting up some of these potential, like 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 you said, may, maybe we don't end up with the guys who have the wheels and are going to get those rushing yards, but we can still end up with a couple high end uh, or at least high ceiling pocket passers yeah and and sam darnold to pair with robbie anderson baker to pair with jarvis uh zach wilson to pair with Corey davis or we get one of the late 
Chargers uh, pass catchers to pair with Herbert. So we have some options there. Tony Pollard off the board. I can't believe you suggested him as a pick, Reimer. I'm in my parents' house. I'm going to tell my dad you said that. Sure, go for it. <laughs> I, I mean, it's really a bet against Zeke. It's more of a Zeke. I know that's the only that's the only reason it's it, it's acceptable is because you're predicting Zeke will get injured. And wow, tight ends are flying off the board. Adam Troutman, Irv Smith, none of these guys. I, I, I mean, I'm fine waiting on tight end. I mean. Do we need an like? Couldn't we just grab that uh, tight end with the crazy ass name out of Denver that we have in best ball? Well, I don't or, sorry, think yeah. in our dynasty. I, I definitely think we can. I mean, look, guys like Evan Ingram are still on the board. There's no well, need for us to go grab a, another tight end here. Yeah, and, and Donald Parham. I I think there is a or even even Jared Cook, but uh, I think he's a bit washed up. Cole Beasley goes. Matt Stafford goes. Elijah Moore goes. Do we do we consider second quarterback here, Ryan? We have essentially seven uh, seven picks left. Darnell Mooney off the board for the Bears. Mm, oh, I was going to call Kramer. out Mooney. Well, do we? I'm going to throw out a name here throw, throw as a possible Bateman setup. Goes. What's up, Let's Rashad Bateman, rookie out of rookie for the Ravens? What about Cole Komet? Oh, I, I mean. It, I if you like him, I like him. We can get him super late. Okay. What about Justin Fields right now, and then stacking him with Cole Komet? And we have Montgomery. So again, kind of yeah. cor- cornering a if the Bears score some points, that that could be fun. Uh, one pick, Sean. Jalen Rager goes. Uh, are you suggesting we do this now? Yeah, I think we have to get Justin Fields now. I mean, maybe I'm crazy and I'm overvaluing him, but I I don't know, man. I I feel like there's... I I look around. I see Nelson Aguilar out there. We can grab another. We can grab more from Arizona to try to corner that. But uh, to your point, I'm fine if you want to grab a quarterback here. Trevor Lawrence still on the board. You want to grab... Field. Let's get some uh, some of that running quarterback equity. You want to do Lance or Fields? Fields. Fields, I think, has a better chance to be the day one starter. And it also puts us in a pretty solid uh, solid place. I, I do think we're going to end up with a third quarterback on this roster, though. Well, yeah, and it could be. And I'm fine with uh, Baker, Sam Darnold, or Zach Wilson being our third quarterback. And, and from when we've done those drafts, those guys are available always in, like, the last couple of rounds, you know? And I, and I think – I do think we, uh, and I'm going to find him now, but do we, do we throw Jalen Guyton in with the chargers? Yeah. As a guy who could, could be the stack just for fun. Like just well, to be and, different. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not dying to, to take more shots Last, at running back, but I, I think I, I could make an exception for no, no, him. No. Wide, wide receiver, Jalen Guyton. For the oh chargers. yeah. 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 I was thinking of the, uh, the UCLA running back, Mike Kosecki, Naheem Hines, Trevor Lawrence, Trey Lance, Latavius Murray. So I think we, I think we, I think we, uh, now maybe we overdrafted field slightly, but. I mean, I those know. guys went at the same time. I don't think it's a, it's an overdraft. And, and now we're looking, it's, it doesn't feel much of a reach. And, and now back to the situation, like, what do we do here? Like, so we, we have only four wide receivers. We still need to pile up more of them. Um, we're what a let twelve starting the twelfth round. Uh, guy, guy like uh, I don't know. I I, I don't think I can actually uh, endorse Evan Ingram, uh, but there are some receivers out there that uh, again, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe we don't do the vertical stack with the Jets. Maybe we sideways stack it and and we we grab Mims to go with Corey Davis. Uh, you know, Henry Rugg is still out there. He's obviously got some upside in a with a Raiders team that could be pretty bad on defense. Do you any of these receivers jump out to you as guys you really want to have on your team? I mean, uh, the Jalen Guyton is the most appealing one that you said so oh, far. See, Tannehill, we, we can, and we, then we can we can take him like at the end of the draft, though. No, yeah, I'm. So, can you scroll down, Kramer? Show off a little. There we go. So after Tannehill, Jeff Smith, then Nelson Aguilar, Hunter Henry, 
Rondell Moore out of Arizona, all off the board. Zach Wilson. Do we take pers- – there we – oh, wow. Yeah, that, damn, our, our – uh, I feel like quarterbacks are going super early in this draft. It's been intriguing. Well, Ryan, we're, we're setting the board here. You know, we, we went early with quarterback. Rest of the rest of the draft adjusts their strategies. When two big whales start splashing the pot, David Johnson goes. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think if we take another running back, I, I say we go Philip Lindsay and we do it late. I don't think uh, we need to, but if you um, want I, I here here's my call, Sean. Terrence Marshall, Panthers third ride receiver to go with Robbie Anderson. I, I think I lost. You're gonna have I'm to just, really make I'm it up, Darnold. It. But I I think we do it. I I don't that that's not a bad spot to be. And and like you said, we have kind of a plan to stack with Fields later, uh, or we could go the Mayfield route. Uh, we still have an opportunity to end up with stacks on all of these players. Yeah. No, I mean it involves us drafting Sam Darnold. But I think I think the Panthers' defense, even though they they use the first round pick on Patrick Sertan. I still think they're going to be kind of shitty and maybe able to score a decent amount of points because I do think as much as Sam Darnold has been kind of trash, I, I think he's a little bit more aggressive than Teddy Bridgewater. And in that Joe Brady, Carolina Panthers offense, I could see him putting up some points. I, I don't know if they're going to be an amazing team. So after we took uh, Terrace Marshall Jr., Evan Ingram goes, Jeffrey Wilson goes, Anthony Ferkster goes, Denzel Mims goes. And by the way, Terrence Marshall Jr., his offensive coordinator from college drafted him. You don't think he's going to be playing day one? I I think he's going to be a guy that's really going to climb up the board. Sean, again, we we, we do need to start accumulating more pass catchers, and I think we have to start looking at volume. And Brashard Perryman, he's the number one on a Detroit Lions team that could be fucking horrible. Do we have do we have to consider taking a target for for uh, Mr. Jared Goff? Yep, Kirk Cousins, Henry Ruggs goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with Perriman if he's there. I'm also fine with just saying screw it and taking Cole Komet, Guyton, or Sam Darnold here as well. Yeah, I think. I, I guess with the quarterback game, we can play chicken and we can either go. I, I mean, it's or, like they're or, all. Yeah, it's like we can wait, but those are guys that really help complete our board and strategy wise at some point. You know, we got to think, are we because there's like three or four guys that I feel like we really need to grab to complete the draft and maybe we're over drafting them. But I think I don't know. I think I kind of think it will help us out long term. Devin Singletary goes uh, Gerald Everett gone off the board. Two more picks I, and then we're up. What are I we? Think who's it right now, Kramer? I think Perryman is the pick if he's there, just because again, clear number one. There's there's tremendous upside. He would be our fifth pass catcher, a uh, sixth pass catcher. I think we then come back with the quarterback play again. I think Jalen Guyton, Cole Komet uh, can be can be had a little bit later, um, and so we. I think our next two picks are maybe maybe we we. All right, so we're on the clock. I think we go Brashard Perryman, just pure upside at this point. All right. I mean, he is a QB one in the tenth, in thirteenth round. I guess let's do it. <laughs> it's it's one of these things you have to remind yourself. By the time the season rolls around, it's going to be hard for me to understand a world where, like we took Terrence Marshall Jr. before the number one target on the Lions, or the number two. I guess Hawkinson's the number one. T. Y. Hilton too, another guy. I was going to throw out. It just seems like his, his uh, and like Jamal Williams going in the same round as the number one. Pass the number one wide receiver. That seems odd. It seems yeah. off. Now, strategy wise, Sean, I think our comeback pick has to be a stack completion. Yep. And I, so, I'm yeah, actually, I actually, mean, I I think almost as gross as it is, maybe we just grab Darnold here because I don't think anyone's worried about Cole Komet or Guyton. People could get desperate for quarterback. And take Sam Darnold. Now, after Perryman was drafted, T.Y. Hilton, like I said, Jamal Williams, Christian Kirk. I feel like that's that's a pretty good play this late. Uh, Daryl Henderson, Tua, horrific pick. Alexander Madison, Traquan Smith, Baker Mayfield, Gronk. Traquan Smith is a fun Jameis stack. 
If yeah. He, if, if it works, you know. Well, and especially, I mean, we'll see what their chemistry is with Michael Thomas, but, uh, you know, they didn't really put a lot of draft capital in receiver, and you feel like that's a vote of confidence for Traquan Smith. Oh, man, Chubba Hubbard, he was a guy I had kind of had my eye on. He, the backup for the Panthers, he could be like, like how he was last year. If McCaffrey goes down, Jamison Crowder goes, one more pick, and they're – then we're back on the clock. What are we looking at, Kramer? I feel like we – I like your angle of stack completion. I'm worried we just we just have to take Darnold. I, I don't think it's a bad play. Um, I think at this point the value – Because someone's going to – he's going to – he's a starting quarterback. Someone's going to get desperate. And I also think just from the perspective of he's worth more – I mean, more to, yes. I mean, yeah. people are getting desperate. Daniel Jones was drafted. Let's let's go let's go, uh, Sam Darnold. All right, that feels good. And now we look to complete the stack with Jalen Guyton, Cole Komet, and or the best remaining guys oh, around. Cole Komet's gone. Oh, you son of a bitch! We should have taken. Ah. I I feel like Darnold wouldn't have lasted though. Yeah, because these guys need quarterbacks. Russell Gage, Cole Komet goes. It's all right. Who else? Uh, Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney. Is there another Chicago receiver we're taking? Ooh, I know. And he's uh, Ryan. He's a he's a guy who helped me win two hundred grand one time. I think that's a kind uh, of fun stack, actually. Just what just fields with the two running backs? <laughs> kind of. I don't know if that. I don't know. We already have a fields running back. You're right. Stack, you're so right. To be fair, I'm just saying so in I, that like, offense. Yeah, but I guess my counter would be too too much of Brown, Bears offense might be a problem. You're right. Paris Campbell goes, then Blake Jarwin for the Cowboys tight end. He goes. Is there is there another uh, Bears pass catcher we're taking? Well, I think we we do have a position of need with the tight end. Yeah, uh, we d we we could do a couple things here. Uh, we could do a uh, another team type stack uh but dude we don't have a stack for herbert yeah maybe we just uh, you know check both jared boxes cook's and... out there jared cook or do we take parham i mean where are you at why not th why not both yeah we have well, kelsey and then we lock up the other or also ryan uh, i mean what do you think jimmy graham is is he actually gonna be uh no, 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 no. That's a bad pick. We're not doing Jimmy <laughs> Graham. No, get off that. We don't need a bear. We don't. We don't need a bear pass catcher. Yeah, you're right. And, and well, I think maybe this put it, if if Anthony Miller's there in the last round, we'll consider him. But all right, right. but we could, I I would be rather end up with uh, a couple pass targets for Herbert that aren't going to be as popular. And honestly, at this point, Carson Wentz. Oh, Kenny Gainwell goes right before us, Ryan. So, I, I I'm. I vote for Jared Cook. Yeah, I guess so. I'm I'm worried Parham is going to be the guy, but then, then let's, let's do it. You want to take Parham? No, I don't know. Let's just take Jared Cook. I mean, they brought him in for a reason. I'm just I'm just worried about how old fucking Jared Cook is. I, I mean he. Yeah, I, I'm with you. And there goes uh, so, but I still think I don't think this affects our ability to take uh, Guyton. Although, do you like Jordan pa Josh Palmer better than uh, Jalen Guyton? No, I think I think Guyton's a play. Philip Lindsay, he's gone. Emmanuel Sanders, he's gone. I mean, I just I saw a guy in Jalen Guyton that was getting work done, and yeah. Uh, he had some nice flashes. He seems like the class, you know, huge upside guy. Ooh, Kadarius Tony went. I mean, yeah, out. I'm pulling up the Chargers depth chart. <laughs> I can't believe he he lasted this long. Kadarius Tony, he's gone. Emmanuel Sanders, Austin Hooper, James White, Darius Slayton. So we have three picks left, Kramer. What do we do? We just go three receivers. I we mean, I feel six. like we don't need another tight end. We don't need. I mean, 
Are there any running backs you're worth taking a shot on? I feel pretty solid on our running backs. Why don't you scroll back up real quick, and we'll do a quick um, recap of who we have so far. Travis right, Kelsey, DeAndre Hopkins, Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Justin Herbert, Robbie Anderson, Jarvis Landry, A.J. Dillon, Corey Davis, Justin Fields, Terrace Marshall Jr., Brashad Perryman, Sam Darnold, Jared Cook. And we're almost back on the clock. Dayami Brown, Amon Ra St. Brown, O.J. Howard, John Brown. I, I keep finding it interesting how how late, and certainly the Rodgers news not helping, but how late the second receiver in Green Bay. Like a lot of them, I feel like, aren't even getting drafted. Jameis Winston, yeah. he's gone. I mean, like uh, Valdez Scantling, or I, I don't know, like those guys. I th oh, and <laughs> as I say that, Marquez Valdez Scantling is taken. All right, Kramer, what, uh, do, what do we got queued up? I feel like I want to go Jalen Guyton now and just just get it over. Let's with. do it. Let's lock up the uh, lock up stack for our buddy Justin Herbert. Jalen Guyton, yeah, he seems like massive upside. He's the type of guy you want to take in a best ball because you know Mike Williams' injury issues, Keenan Allen getting up there. Like you know, there's certainly a world where uh, you know we could really we could really pop. Uh, still, still need, uh, you know, I guess what we have two picks left and right now sitting on two tight ends, three quarterbacks, four running backs and seven wide receivers. Kind of uh, an ideal, ideal stack. Maybe we're a hair short on running backs, but we are pushing that hyper fragile lifestyle, Ryan. After Guyton was selected, KJ Hamler, Taysom Hill, Sammy Watkins, Jared Goff, Christopher Herndon goes as well. Is Anthony Miller going to play this year? Because it sounds uh, I, like he's on the trade block. Like I, I, I like your 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 want to really badly to stack. Uh, uh, I'm fine. I'm fine Miller. not with not stacking him, but you know worth he's noting. got the legs, and that you know that would be we did stack the more uh, stationary guy, so maybe we're doing it kind. Of, so that that begs the question because we're almost to, back on the. Tariq clock. Cohen. Tariq Cohen is available. Oh no, wait, he he just he just won. Tariq Cohen was just selected. Dwayne has selected. Uh, Demarcus Robinson has been selected. Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams. Uh, or am I thinking of uh, Damian Williams? Deshaun I Jackson. Ooh, all right, we're back on the clock. I uh, don't really have a plan for this pick, but as I look, I wonder if we should snag uh, Tyro Williams and just another Detroit pass catcher and hope that they're just shitty and passing all day. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming Carolina, no good pass catchers left. Yeah. I, I don't mind some of these, like, strange team stacks for, for guys who are not. I, I looked at A.J. Green. I just feels like such a high probability he's no longer going to be on the field. Um, yeah. Dude, I, I'm I'm also fine. We have eight receivers now. Do any tight ends uh, attractive to you here? I know you're a big tight end guy. What about? A guy like Dawson Knox. He's the starting tight end for an offense that's going to score. Wait, a lot has of Zach Ertz been drafted, Ryan? No. Okay. I mean, if Zach Ertz is available, he could go to Buffalo and be the number one tight end. He He's a, certainly a guy we should definitely take. All right, I got him. Mari Rogers, up. Jarek McKinnon, A.J. Green, J.D. McKissick, Harrison Bryant, all gone. Lynn Bowden. He's kind of an interesting uh, pass catcher hybrid there for the Dolphins. I mean, I, I think Zach Ertz is our lock and loaded pick. Oh, my pick God, dude. And, uh, no, I found our pick. Hunter Renfro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's one of your guys, right? Short white guy, no, knows how to get no, I, I, Yeah, I mean uh, – you know, I have I have room in my heart for Cole Beasley, but yeah, I can't I can't fit <laughs> Cole Beasley and Hunter Renfro into my heart. Austin Knox goes Richard, which that one that one's kind of sneaky actually. Uh, Brian Edwards goes Richard Higgins, I think, and maybe we go. Uh, 
Maybe we go Donovan Peoples Jones, Ryan. I, that's that could be a guy worth considering. Josh Palmer goes another Chargers uh, pass catcher. Nico Collins out of the Houston from the Houston Texans. That is a uh, what about a, what about a fifth running back with Ahmed for Miami? Yeah, but dude, if Zach Ertz is here, I the upside on Zach Ertz is super high. Like I I think the if you're just looking for a more consistent player, the Ahmed is definitely the guy, but in best ball, I think we got to go uh, Zach Ertz. I mean, he could go to Buffalo and catch like six, seven touchdowns. I mean, he... last thing I'll say, yeah. Giovanni Bernard is now with Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. Could he be James white 2.0? No. All right. So Zach I mean, they Ertz... have so many pass catchers. We're betting Let's on go. the fact that Zach Ertz ends up on a team that wants him and he could be the number one tight end. Like, it, it also gives us a third tight end. I mean, as silly as it sounds, just the randomness of injury in the NFL, having only two tight ends feels a bit scary. So yeah, kind of fills out that situation. We're hyper fragile. What's the worst case scenario here? We end up with Zach Ertz on the Eagles? Because that, it doesn't, yeah, that's prob- not the worst thing. Ertz on the Eagles. But I, I think if they keep him, I mean, they'll use him. I, I think they're trying to get moved past him. It sounds like if they can't trade him, they're going to cut him. Um so I, Donald Parham goes kind of wrapping things up here. Make sure you drop a, a review on Apple podcast. Give us that old review and uh, merch Monday. We're taping this late Sunday night, plowing through mother's day. Again, make a, uh, make the mother of your children happy. Get the get Roman.com slash SGP $15 off <laughs> the perfect mother's day gift. Get Roman. But uh, yeah, drop us an Apple Podcast review, five stars, ideally. Again, not not telling you how to live your life, but hopefully, if you've sat through this best ball draft in May, I'm guessing you're a true hashtag DGens only. All this free content, all the free picks. You, know, you want to you rattle bills with some uh, cast reviews? You want to rattle off our team one more time, Sean? Sure, you you got it, Kramer. All right, we got uh, Travis Kelsey to go with DeAndre Hopkins, Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Justin Herbert at the quarterback position, Robbie Anderson, Jarvis Landry, A.J. Dillon, Corey Davis, Justin Fields, Terrence Marshall Jr., Brashard Perryman, Sam Darnold, Jared Cook, Jalen Guyton, Tyrell Williams, and Zach Ertz. Wow, two Lions receivers, Sean. I, I really got into you on this one. <laughs> Well, it it got a it got you to start to introduce the term horizontal stack into our podcast, which we may not have gotten to otherwise. So it was it's certainly worth that uh, just for that. Apologize for uh, chewing my ice during your uh, during your read there, Ryan. Unprofessional no, no of me. <laughs> no, no. <worries. laughs> All right, we'll be. I will be back in studio Wednesday night, taping a podcast. Instant reactions to the NFL schedule release. LFG, let's go, baby! For the sports gambling podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Uh, g- good draft, Sean. Except for the third round. I like our picks, Kramer. Let it ride.